Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Wizards of the Grimoire by Grimoire Games. This is a two-player game that takes roughly 30 minutes to play and is for ages 13 and up. In the game, Wizards of the Grimoire, you are attempting to battle against the Grand Wizard Andor's protege, you being one of them, and you're attempting to defeat them in order to become the Keeper of the Grand Grimoire. And in order to do so, you'll have to remove 60 HP from your opponent. You'll go ahead and set the game up, and then you're going to go ahead and begin by gathering spells, casting spells, and doing damage to your opponent until they reach zero. And if you can do that, you win the game. I'll show you how to set it up, how to play, and of course, my review. The setup for the game, Wizards of the Grimoire, is pretty simple. You'll go ahead and shuffle the spell deck and the mana deck place them side by side, and then begin by taking 10 spells from the spell deck and making a pool of cards which everyone can gather from. Then give each player their life counters and set them to 60. Afterwards, you're gonna go ahead and have the first player gather a spell from the middle and then replace it with the spell deck. The next player will go ahead and gather their spell. The first player will once again gather his spell. And finally, the last player is going to begin the game by doing the turn structure. After that, make sure that you have these spells on one side of the board and the mana on the other, and you can begin the game. Playing the game is just as simple as setting it up, and you have this handy dandy little card to illustrate what you need to do. Now we've already went through the opening phase, so the first player should have two spells, and the second player should have one, and thusly the second player will actually begin the game. And to begin the game, the first thing that you're going to do is choose a spell. You can choose any of the 10 spells in the pool here for free, and you'll take it, you'll place it down into your tableau, and you'll replace it with a new spell. You can never have more than six spells in your field at any point in time. However, if you want, you can remove a spell as long as it has no mana on it and replace it with a new spell during this step. If all your spells have mana on them, however, no spells can be removed and you simply skip to the next step, which is your spell cooldown phase. Spell cooldown is pretty simple. Certain times during the game, you're going to have mana on your spells. And when you do, you're going to be able to remove one of them, the top card, from each spell during this phase. So at the beginning of the spell cooldown, if you have mana, remove one of each, and then go ahead and put them in the spell discard or mana discard pile, I should say. And then you're pretty much ready to go. You're then going to go ahead and gather mana. Gathering mana is important. It's how you're going to be casting spells. And you'll be drawing three cards from the mana deck. These cards can range from one to four, and you're not going to really use the front side as much as you will the back, because these cards that you're going to be using to cast spells will be placed face down. However, certain times during the game, whether it be a basic attack or it be because a card says so, you'll be utilizing the card's mana value when it tells you to do so. After you've drawn three spells, you can cast your spells. However, any spells with mana on them are considered to be on cooldown and you cannot use them. Thusly, you're going to want to use spells that have no mana currently on them and you're going to need to pay the cost. Each spell has a cost. In the top right left hand corner, you will see a spell cost in a card space or text icon. That is going to tell you how much mana needs to be placed on the card face down. Additionally, it will tell you what type of spell it is. It could be an instant spell, it could be a durational spell, and finally, it can be an infinite spell, which just lasts as long as the card is on the table. Finally, at the very bottom, it will tell you what the spell does when you choose to place mana on it, or at the beginning of the phase when you're removing mana from it, or if it's just in play. And when you cast spells, this will cost two coercive argument. You will take these two cards, any of that you choose, and place them down. And remember, the order in which you place the cards matter, because certain spells do certain things, revealing your mana cost symbols. And they will tell you to do something when you cast the spell. This one here is an instant, and it says, choose one. Take up to three randomly selected mana from your opponent's hand, or discard a mana card of off two of your other spells. So you can go ahead and kind of create a, a cycle that allow you to play other spells faster. Purple spells typically are going to help you with your mana in some way, kind of supportive. You're going to have red ones that are just going to do damage, and you'll have green ones that kind of give you mana and give you more power throughout the game. Placing these two on here, I would take this one off. This goes to the discard pile, and then I have access to this new ability, which can then let me do damage to my opponent. After I've went ahead and cast any spells I want, I can perform a basic attack. I can re reveal a mana card from my hand, this one's a 2, and I can cast it by simply putting it to the discard pile and making my opponent lose HP. Whenever an opponent loses HP, they're going to simply deduct it from their total hole. You're going to go ahead and flip the card to whatever side you need to be, and it'll go, okay, I'm at 59, now I'm going to take 2 damage, 58, 
57. And that's how you're gonna keep track of life in this game. And that's pretty much the entirety of the game. If you can get your opponent to zero HP before you, you're going to win. You, as long as you can cast spells, utilizing your mana and all the different combinations, then you're pretty much good to go. The last thing I can explain is that for your basic games, you can simply remove certain cards, which are illustrated in the rules, to make an easier game. And in addition, there is even more bonus cards because in this specific game, you're going to have the Lost Pages micro expansion, which you can set aside as well. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for how you play the game, Wizards of the Grimoire. Wizards of the Grimoire is a tactical two-player card game. It functions similar to games like Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, and Yu-Gi-Oh! in the ways that you're going to combat your opponent. Your objective, removing their HP, and thusly, you're going to be playing spells and casting spells, utilizing your mana, and each spell is unique and does something different. You could be trying to choose one, do a damage and discard a mana off of the card or one of your other spells. You could choose to do a damage and you'll deal extra damage for each time the spell was cast previously this turn. Or Friendly Truce, your opponent may give you three mana cards from their hand and if they do not, you gain five mana. And so they have to kind of, they, they start kind of adding to this kind of uh, combination of sorts that allow you to kind of make up the spells that you want. And you always want to have, speaking of combinations, multiple different types types of spells in your arsenal. Going for a few attacks and some ways to remove mana from those attacks and then having a card that generates you more mana will thusly allow you to make more attacks faster and remove that HP faster off of your opponent. And your opponent's going to be doing the same thing as well. They could be trying to hinder you, help themselves, do damage to you, or just better their field. And it makes it kind of a, a very close and tight-knit game the entire time. There's always ways to come back. No card is overly powerful or unfair or unbalanced in this game. It's really, really well put together and it's a tight, nice, combative game. Utilizing different combos is going to impair your opponent and maybe help you. However, they might have ways to mitigate those spells. They can also slow your spells down by placing mana on them with certain spells. And there are a ton. You're not going to get through this entire deck. You're probably not going to even get through more than 12 spells in a game, but it's possible. And most likely you're going to be dead within about 10 or 11 turns or so, thusly going ahead and playing again if you want. When we played this game the first time, we played it multiple times afterwards. We really, really enjoyed Wizards of the Grimoire. This game is not only tight and competitive and has cool combinations, but it works and it's streamlined and it fits and you understand what the spells do when they do them and how you can utilize them and how they work with other spells. Drawing a card and seeing that card and what the spell does and you don't really understand it at first, you'll just have to look through all the other spells and say, oh, here is some combinations that kind of work. So every time you see 10 spells out here, you're always gonna see at least two that help in some way work with each other or just straight up do hard damage to your opponent. That is excellent. Speaking of excellent, the card quality is very nice as well. These are nice cards. They are well put together. They are nice to shuffle. They feel good. These cards are not going to bust. I probably, they're probably black core, I would imagine. They're really, really sturdy and great for shuffling. The artwork in this game is excellent. If you like the style of artwork, which this is kind of like this, I don't know, I'd say like more in the 2000s area style uh, art. I'll show some up here on the B-roll. It is really, really well done. And it's really, really like indicative of what you're trying to do. And you're kind of like a apprentice working with the master. And then you have to suddenly go up against your rival. In Pokemon Red and Blue, you have this rival, Gary, and you kind of compete against each other, but you're not necessarily enemies. But in this case here, it's kind of the same thing, but you're fighting to be the keeper of the Grand Grimoire because you want to be the one that holds the power and power is always gonna be the most important thing for a lot of people and this is no different overall though card quality art quality the type of game if you like two player competitive back and forth games and you don't want to keep buying more and more cards and having to worry about making decks and shuffling and all that this is the game for you this is going to have one deck of spells one deck of mana both of you are utilizing cards from both of the decks and the only time you're ever gonna have to reshuffle is maybe the mana deck if you go too far. It's quick, it's tight, it's precise. I love this game and you will too if you like the style of game. As far as negatives go, I don't have any. Uh, all I can say is if you don't like the type of game, you know who you are. You don't like two player games. If you don't like competitive games that can be mean, aggressive, then this is not your type of game. But for all those of you who do, this is. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Wizards of the Grimoire or Grimoire. 
however you want to say it. You can also go ahead and check out our website on filthygamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to hit that like button. Go ahead and click on the link down below in the description where you can pick up the game Wizards of the Grimoire. And if you want, you can also go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button so you can see more videos just like this one. We create them Monday through Friday and we have a live stream on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. This week we're doing a giveaway stream for Christmas, so join in if you would like. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to being the keeper of the Grand Grimoire without you next time.